Hi everybody, my name's Josh, I'm from Emperor War Games and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of the new bolt action campaign which is D-Day Overlord just in time for the 75th anniversary of course of D-Day. Uh, just a quick bit about us, we're a new independent uh, gaming company uh, set up online, emperorwargaming.co.uk and we are basically trying to open a gaming cafe and to do that we've started online to kind of build up some some cash to be able to put down stuff like rent and whatnot but if you like the idea of that please support us like I say we're new and independent and it'd be great to have any kind of support we can so let's move on to the main event campaign D-Day Overlord so first things first when you order this you get not only the book but you also get the Captain Colin Maud RN Beachmaster model with his uh, his two little dogs. So you get obviously Captain Maud and you get a German Shepherd and a Boxer Dog, which would be awesome. Nice little miniatures to paint in there. So that's great. And then with the actual book itself, I mean, first impressions are amazing, like they are with all of uh, Warlord's products. I mean, they've, they use Osprey Games as well, which is just amazing and some brilliant graphics there. So let's have a look, open up the book, see what we've got. So there's a lot of stuff with this book. You get so much, so many scenarios, the new, the new units that have come out and the new theater selectors as well. So let's open up and have a look. So the first things you get is the kind of the history and the invasion and all about that sort of stuff, which is great. A lot of stuff to read there. So even if, you're not such a mini miniatures and wargaming fan. I think just the history alone is worth worth it for this book because there's so much in here that you don't even know about really. But yeah, some beautifully painted miniatures there as well, which we like. And then we go straight into the airborne assault and stuff I didn't even know about, like the D-Day deceptions using the SAS as well and Operation Titanic. I mean, this sounds like a great little scenario to play. Not too many models involved, and it just it looks like it would run really well. Great little setup there as well. So we like that a lot. And it goes through all of that as well. Then we just move on to the British Airborne Pegasus Bridge. Absolutely iconic, which is great. So you've got scenario of Pegasus Bridge and the Coupe de Man. And then you've also got taking the West Bank as well, with Pegasus Bridge, which is, it just seems like it could be a bloodbath, but we'll see. We'll get through all these games eventually. The Assault on Merville Battery, which is a nice one to see. So you use the British Paratroopers there as well. Just got some nice British Paratrooper dice in stock as well, if that's the kind of thing that you want for your British Airborne Army. So let's have a look. So great deployment zones there, and it just looks like it could be great fun as well, which I like a lot. Ooh, and they've provided some what if alternatives as well so that might be quite fun to play i like the disabling of the guns rule as well so they didn't really have that many uh, explosives to use just a couple of gammon bombs so you give them a fire order and basically on a one there's no effect uh two three or four uh, the gun is temporarily disabled and on five or six that gun is destroyed so i like the sound of that okay let's keep going so now we go move into the D-Day, the early hours, when the main bulk of the airborne troops came in. So we've got some skirmishing in the dark, which is quite nice. You've got some randomised reserves, so 2d6 roll. Nice. Cool, you wouldn't want to roll two sixes. An eight-man Falsham Jaeger squad, late war, with four assault rifles, two rifles and two LMGs. That might not be what you want to be seeing coming towards you in the dark, is it? Right, and some US ones as well. I like that. Braycourt Manor. Now, I feel like this is one that a lot of people will know about if you've seen Band of Brothers. Um, this is them assaulting the actual uh, the guns at Braycourt Manor. So the US forces, you get Lieutenant Rick, uh, Dick Winters, Joe Toy, Wynn, Popeye, uh, Lorraine, and then you also get Buck Compton, uh, Wild Bill Garnier, Malarkey, Halls, uh, two-man LMG team, which is nice, Petty and Liebgott, 
and then you get Lipton and Mike Ranney as well, which sounds awesome. What a great little scenario. And reserves, of course, you've got Donald Spears, and everyone knows about old Spears, don't we? Did he do it, did he not? So yeah, if we keep moving through, there's just some great scenarios in here. I really like this book. I'm very excited to start playing my way through all of these. Sun Marigles, the counter-attack. That'll be quite fun to play, I think. Noelville. Yeah, I like this a lot. This is going to provide, you know what? I think years of fun. And now we move on to the actual beach landings themselves, which are gonna be great, aren't they? The greatest armada in history, as we now know. So you got Utah Beach. Bloody Omaha Beach. These are going to be great to play. Obviously, we all saw Omaha in uh, Saving Private Ryan, so it'll be really interesting to actually play these with the miniatures to see if, basically, if the uh, the Allies could have actually taken the beach. But look at that. Excellent. I like the little uh, setup they've got. Nice. Really exciting. So I'm just going to skip forward now to the new units and see what we think of them. Go through all the beaches. The holding of Pegasus Bridge as well. So let's have a look. So you get the new infantry for the British, you get the forward naval observer, uh, Pathfinders, Royal Engineers airborne section, beach assault section, commando subsection, parachute breaching section, a lot of the uh, airborne troops which sounds absolutely amazing. A demolition team, SAS deception team, pioneers, yeah, I feel like these are going to be fun to play with. You get the Duplex Drive Sherman. That actually comes in the D-Day set that is now available to purchase as well. So that might be quite cool and it'd be interesting to try and paint one of those. Do you paint it with the screen up or down? Does it move? Who knows? Uh, Sherman Crab. Uh, some of you might have seen this in some of the lore about and the history of D-Day. It's basically a Sherman tank with a giant flail on the front of it. It was designed to stop anti-tank mines by exploding them in front of it. So that might be quite interesting. It'd be interesting to see as well if they add a uh, rule about close combat fighting with that because that would be pretty nasty. Germany. Let's have a look. So you get the Fusilier Squad, Green Grenadier Squads. So inexperienced young conscripts, old men, foreigners, a few veterans with permanent injuries from previous campaigns. Not the kind of people that you would want defending Normandy. So 35 points, one NCO, four men, rifles, add up to five men with rifles. This all sounds quite good, but as I'm, as I'm well aware, inexperienced isn't always good. But then as... The Russian special rule as well of uh, qu quantity has a quality all of its own. Depends on the dice roll, I think, doesn't it? Oh, a flam panzer. That doesn't sound nice. Turret mounted anti tank gun. Hmm. Fair enough. That sounds quite fun. So, yeah, a lot of new stuff coming in for the Germans, which I think will be great fun to play. Panzer 35R. It's a Renault. They captured it. So yeah, Panzer Jaeger, assault guns, self-propelled guns. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see how a lot of this plays out. German eunuch. Doesn't sound great, to be honest. You don't want to be a eunuch, so let's, go. let's have a look at the theatre selectors real quick. Ah, British theatre selectors. Okay, so you get some nice ones for all the different stuff. So you get a British Canadian Beach Assault, Merville Assault Plan, Merville Assault Historical, um, D Day Canadian Off the Beaches, the Merville Defenders for the Germans. That might be quite interesting to play. Uh, the Luftlander Division, which will be nice. What else have we got here? Static Resistance Nest Reinforced Platoon. Two artillery guns, including two 88s. That's not good. The 88 is, as one British soldier said, anti-everything. So you do not want two of them pointing at you, especially in this. Let's keep going. Panzer divisions, which is good. Oh, you can get two vehicles, eh? Armoured reinforced platoon. I like the sound of that. 
21st Panzer Grenadier Reinforced Platoon D Day. Let's have a look. So you get Headquarters, 4 Infantry, LMG, Panzer Shrek Goliath Sniper, 1 Artillery Gun. Then you do get 2 tanks. Now that could be something very, very nasty. A Panzer IV and a Panzer III, or even a WESP, potentially, self propelled gun, and a Panzer IV. That WESP just providing that little bit of extra kind of anti infantry power that maybe a Panzer IV couldn't do, but that just sounds nasty. Do not want to be facing that. So, yeah, they've just got a lot in here, and then moving on to the US stuff, but. Oh, they've added in some. Oh, I like that. The movement over water, deep water and shallow water. That'll be really interesting to play. Some beach rules. And then some special rules as well. So it added in the minefields. That looks awesome. Overall, I am so excited to be playing this. And I cannot wait to get the big D-Day box set opened up start playing those beach landings because I think it's going to be amazing thank you very much for taking the time to watch this today uh, like I said emperorwargaming.co.uk we're new we need some support from people so please hit the subscribe button I'll try and do as many new videos as I can but yeah in the meantime check out the website see what you think and I hope you enjoyed this video thank you